Welcome to the Vanguard Radio Show. I am your host, Terry Pavlik, Editor-in-Chief of Vanguard Magazine. We have an exciting show for you this week. And now over to Nestor Arellano. Thanks, Terry. The F-35 has been slammed countless times for its reported lack of dogfighting prowess. Much of that is based on a leaked report that detailed the plane's capabilities. This week on the Vanguard podcast, we have a former Canadian Air Force squadron commander who will give us his take on the F-35. A full disclosure here, Billy Flynn is currently an F-35 test pilot, but he has had numerous combat mission experience flying the CF-18 and he has flown other fighter aircraft including the Eurofighter Typhoon. Have a listen to what he has to say. So previously, all we've been hearing about the uh, F-35 was uh, a lot of negative stuff about how it's not a good fighter. And unfortunately, a lot of the stuff we're hearing is from uh, analysts and writers like myself. But now we have a real pilot with us. And uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Billy Flynn. Hi there, Billy. Hi there. Thanks for having me here today. Yeah, so really talk about your career as a pilot. I spent 23 years in the Canadian Armed Forces. I was the first baby pilot selected to fly the F-18 back in 1982. I was uh, picked to be part of a trial to see if young pilots could, could adapt to the then new, quote, plastic, unquote, airplane that Canada was buying. Canada received its first F-18 now, what, 33 years ago, I think mm-hmm. it is. And uh, I was part of the trial. I flew the very first intercept of it, mm-hmm. went to Germany with the first four airplanes, and uh, lived a career in there. And my, um, I flew F-16s in the middle of my career as a test pilot on exchange with the United States Air Force at mm-hmm. Edwards Air Force Base. And my last job was as the squadron commander of 441 Tactical Squadron. And I then, in that period, commanded the... Canadian F-18 wing that flew combat out of Aviano Air Base in Italy over Kosovo and Serbia in 1999 as part of Operation Allied Force. I flew 25 combat missions as a squadron commander and then I retired from there and I went to work for what we now call uh, Airbus, uh, EADS in the time, in Munich, Germany and I flew Eurofighter Typhoons and a couple other European fighters for uh, the time when Typhoon was a prototype airplane. And then I came to Lockheed Martin. In uh, 2003, I began flying all versions of the F-16 and uh, eventually went to the F-35 program. That's an amazing career. Lots of fun. There's a great, <laughs> imagine now I get to fly the fifth generation F-35, uh, all three variants of it. I live mm-hmm. in Patuxent River, Maryland, which is where the United States Navy and Marine Corps test the Stovall, so short takeoff vertical landing version of the F-35, and the carrier variant, the big biggest of the F-35s that lands and takes off from an aircraft carrier. No, oh, so let, why did they call you baby pilot? Think about now how uh, we look at an F-35. So in the day, let's talk about the CF-18. Uh-huh. In the early 80s, the CF-18 was so different at the beginning of the fourth generation of airplanes that we didn't know how to manage it because it had computers. It was powered by two Commodore 64 computers and we thought it was a video game wizards kind of airplane. We didn't know what to do with it. Mm. Fourth generation airplanes were so much more maneuverable than anything the Canadian Armed Forces had before that. We bought 138 of them and we didn't know how pilots would adapt to this whiz kid type airplane with powerful 64K computers, imagine that in this day and age. <laughs> and so we trialed every every course, I was on the very first course, every course had half baby pilots who had never flown anything, any other fighter before that, and the other half were experienced pilots as we transitioned and learned to fly the F-18. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to see if the young pilots could adapt to this new technology quicker. So that's kind of fun, and, mm-hmm. and here's why I mentioned that. We're now 35, 34, 35 years later, and we're looking at an F-35. An F-35 is a fifth generation fighter. Its unique capabilities are really about stealth. Stealth means Harry Potter and the Cloak of Invisibility. It means survivability for the pilot inside that airplane. 
new t new tactics when you fly like that, and then sensor fusion. So if I had a six, two 64 Ks powering my F-18 34 years ago, I have 8.6 million lines of software code that power the every single F-35 that flies. And I see not just what my radar shows me in front, like the F-18 and Typhoon or F-16s that I grew up in, but I see everything all around me for hundreds and hundreds of miles in 360 degrees. I see as much behind me as I fly along as I do ahead of me because I have more than just a radar that senses, like I have a radar just as we do in the F-18 and Typhoon, but I have other sensors that see everything you can imagine on the ground, over the sea, and in the air. So now we got a busy game. Mm -hmm. We're not playing Pong anymore like in my day. We're playing Halo 5 and Grand Theft Auto. That's the kind of technologies. My office space as a pilot is really two iPads. You saw, you saw yeah. that. Mm -hmm. It's really two big iPads and a helmet like Tony Stark wears in the Iron Man mm -hmm. movies my two boys love to watch. So do I, by the way. Uh, and um, an airplane that's commanded by voice activation or voice recognition like Siri on your iPhone. Yes. As I was uh, flying the F-35 simulator yesterday, you were explaining to me why this type of aircraft is what Air Forces around the world needs right now. Because the uh, air warfare has changed over the years. C could you uh, track back to that a bit? Oh, that's a great question. So let's talk about warfare. I think 30 years ago or even 20 years ago, uh, I flew as a Cold War pilot in Germany. My father did 25 years before me. We, as part of NATO, would amass every airplane we had, and we know, knew that we were going to face the Soviet bloc Russian hordes that were going to come from East Germany and Poland across into the west where I live. And we were going to do attrition warfare. The best NATO fighters were going up against the best Soviet fighters. We were going to shoot missiles at, you, at each other, and whoever was left at the end would have won. We were vastly outnumbered in those days in Europe, but we had better airplanes and better training. If we continued to think that we wanted to be part of attrition warfare, at some point we'd still be outnumbered by uh, Soviet airplanes or uh, enemy fighters, and we wouldn't win. Stealth airplanes, fifth generation airplanes, change that. I now fly in an airplane that cannot be seen by the, abyss, the enemy. It's not, I'm not perfectly invisible, but I am so difficult to see that I can come and go in enemy territory and not and know that I am not, I'm not going to be detected. I know with certainty that that tactic works because we have for more than a decade flown with the F-22 Raptor, which is the other fifth generation fighter in the Western world. And we've watched the F-35, or the F-22, sorry. We've watched the F-22 dominate, absolutely dominate in every exercise, in every place that it's flown since the beginning. We know that stealth technology works in that way. So I come and go, I survive. I'm not going one against one or one against two against Soviet airplanes anymore or Russian airplanes. I'm going out and I'm going to drop my bombs, fire my missiles, and come back with and operate with complete impunity and know with absolute certainty that I'll survive. That's a massive difference. It's not attrition warfare before, because he, or like we did before, because he doesn't see me coming and he doesn't know I'm going. So that's a big part of how I do warfare. I'm, look, in Kosovo, when I went to war in 1999, I personally planned and led 70 aircraft attack packages as a commander, attending officer, I led packages, uh, mass attacks of airplanes into Kosovo and Serbia on bombing missions. We needed 70 aircraft with all different types of capabilities to bust through the enemy defenses, to protect us against enemy air-to-air -air fighters, to protect us from surface-to-air missiles that were shot at us, and to get us in and out of bad, bad guy land in one piece. I don't do that anymore. I go with two or four F-35s. We know that we're invisible. We go into enemy territory, attack the targets we need, and we come back and leave. And no one ever knows us. And I don't want anyone else near me because they will highlight me to the enemy. Mm -hmm. I want to be all on my own. And that's mm -hmm. a uh -huh. dramatic difference in how we do combat than ever before. Now, the F-35 has been you know, slammed because of um, reports that it's no good in the fights. 
but you were telling me yesterday that that's actually not true. It's fascinating. So as a fourth generation, generation fighter, what we all remember is Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer from the movie Top Gun in dogfights. It's what I did as an F-18 and F-16 pilot my whole career. That's not how we employ an F-22. And that's not how we're going to employ an F-35. Okay? We will come and go and the enemy will never know we're there and there's no chance that we're going to allow ourselves to get into dog fighting, as we call it, uh, like we did in previous uh, wars and as the training was over all those years. Now that I've said that, uh, we have gone and proven to ourselves how this aircraft maneuvers. So I fly an F-35 that goes 700 knots, nautical miles per hour, that's 1,400 kilometers per hour. It goes 1.6 times the speed of sound, 1.6 miles. I regularly overspeed my jet. I've gone faster than 700, I've gone faster than 1.6, I do it almost every week that I fly. It's an aircraft that pulls 9G, nine times the force of gravity. That's more than an F-18, that's the same as a Eurofighter Typhoon and an F-16. I go as, and I fly slow. I fly as, I fly slower than an F-18. I fly as slow as 50 degrees angle of attack, which is slower or better than the F-18. And the F-18, we, we who flew it know it has great slow speed maneuvering capability. It's known for how slow it flies. You see that at air shows uh, with the CF-18 demo pilots always do a slow speed pass at around 25 degrees angle attack. You can imagine that I'm even slower at 50 degrees angle attack. So I said that I go fast at 700 knots and 1.6 Mach. I go slow at 50 degrees angle attack and I pull 9G as, as good as an F-16 F did. In dogfighting, uh, after the one report that we've all read, um, our young pilots who train in places like Luke Air Force Base go out regularly and learn the tactics that we had in older generations and do dogfighting and, and regularly they win all the time against the F-16. To fighter pilots, uh, I tell them that our airplane, the F-35, flies a lot like the F-18 did that I grew up in. It loves showing how aggressive the nose of the airplane can pitch towards an adversary and terrify and intimidate him. And it flies differently than a Typhoon or an F-16, which have special limits on the capabilities of the flight control system, which limited those airplanes at 9G, mm -hmm. force. and then when it gets slow down as slow as 25 degrees angle attack, an F-16 cannot go slower than that. And that's just the way the flight controls are developed. So my airplane is more akin to an F-18 type flying capability and different than an F-16 or a Typhoon. It's mm -hmm. not better or worse. Mm -hmm. uh, if you drove a Chevrolet and I drove a Ford, you'd love your Chevrolet and how it drives and what the dashboard does and I would like a Ford. It's just different. Mm -hmm. So the F-35 F has brilliant maneuvering capabilities just like the airplanes it is replacing. And we call that the kinematics. So it has the kinematics of speed uh, in the high end, speed on the slow end, ability to pull lots of G better than the as good as the airplanes it's replacing. Its difference is I'm flying as a stealth airplane and you'll never ever know I'm there. I'm never ever going to get blindsided and jumped on like you saw Tom Cruise get attacked by the, the adversaries who showed up magically behind him. That's never happening in a world where I can see 360 degrees around me and I detect everyone for hundreds of miles. That's yeah, so any last points? Well, what's really interesting is the momentum we have in the F-35. As recently as a couple of weeks ago, the Danish government released an executive summary of the program they did to evaluate three different fighters, Typhoon, uh, the Boeing Super Hornet, and the F-35. And the F-35, in an open and transparent competition, won on all the four major categories in capability, on cost, imagine that cost, on industrial participation and the strategic value of that airplane over the next 40 years. And that's a really interesting uh, comparison to how we view this airplane in Canada. We continue to be so confident on the momentum and progress of F-35. I hope you enjoyed that clip because next week we're featuring another fighter slash test pilot. We'll have to say goodbye for now, 
But be sure to tune in next week when the Vanguard podcast comes back with an interview with Ricardo Traven, former Canadian Air Force CF-18 pilot and now FA-18 Super Hornet Chief Test Pilot.